today and something bad has well happened. But one thing with me, I want to show you now, now the face of your brother Mazen Namdekan. I want you to enjoy saying Namdekan because not only me go see him. I was so happy seeing him today. Number one, they say uh, they are caught, they admit, say it's no good the way they bring back Namdekan on that one. They don't buy case for that one. He don't agree, say, he no good as the military invade Nam the Kano home. That one another winning you know. home. <laughs> but the bad thing be said, they suppose Grant and Bell. They no suppose revoke him in case, make it start afresh. It no make sense. Nigeria and Zoological Republic, true, true. I don't see him. I they talk him, but most time people know they believe. But this one now go teach you, say, it happened real, real. Now, 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 Let's watch and see Nam Dekano. The Federal High Court in Abuja on a four-count charge of treasonable felony, conspiracy to commit treasonable felony, illegal importation of radio equipment, and defamation of former president of Nigeria, Muhammadu Buhari. The charges were later withdrawn by the former Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Mandami, who replaced them with a fresh 14-count charge bordering on terrorism and membership of a proscribed group. The court reduced the charge to seven count, which the appeal court later quashed. Dismissed by the verdict of the appeal court, the Nigerian government filed an appeal at the Supreme Court. Commenting on the much-anticipated judgment, an Abuja-based social political activist, Deji Adeinju, said the Supreme Court should admit Kano to bail. He said, my hope is that the Supreme Court will deliver a judgment that is acceptable to everyone. But no matter what the Supreme Court delivers, it will not be acceptable to some. In the case of Ojuku versus the Lagos State Government, once the right-thinking members of the public go home, believing that the judiciary is biased, then it defeats the purpose for which the judiciary was set up. Our appeal to our judges is that they should deliver a judgment that we make citizens have confidence in the judiciary. Politicians must not be bad losers. They must learn to accept defeat when they lose elections. Canon should be admitted to bail. Bail is not an escape from justice. It is an opportunity for the defendant to amply defend himself. In my view, this idea of turning people into political prisoners is unacceptable. Now, Nandekano has been going to court for so many times, from the Federal High Court to the Appeal Court. They have dismissed the federal government's case against Nandekano and they shot Nandekano acquitted. It was the federal government that also went to this uh, Supreme Court. But it is very important for you to know the level of the judgment that um, was delivered before today. Listen to Nandekano counsel, the senior advocate of Nigeria, Mike Ozekume, as he speaks. All the 15 counts in the church are bad, bad, and bad. Like I described it before the court, they are as dead as dodo. All that the court requires is to give them a decent burial. Because there is nothing whatsoever in the counts at all. You are accusing Nandi Kano of making some broadcast. You didn't say where this broadcast was made. Was it made in the spirit world? Was it made in the air? Was it made under the ground? You didn't state. That was to run away from the first count they had fired, which we got, uh, which we attacked when they had mentioned the United Kingdom. So they thought that by not mentioning a place, they had gotten away from it. But as a matter of fact, they have worsened their case because the Federal High Court Act says specifically, Section 34, that you must state the very location, specific location, where an offense has been committed. That is one. They, they couldn't state any. They say it may brokers, and that the brokers were in furtherance of some treasonable acts. For you to charge a person with fraudulent, with fraudulent treasonable treason, you must have to charge a person with treason. Namdekano is not charged with treason here. We call it the predicate offense. 
it is from this predicate offense that the acts of furthering we emanate. So they are building empty, I mean, castles on empty air. There's nothing to support it. You are saying that the brokers he made led to protests, violent protests in the East and in Lagos, affecting Lagos' transportation system. Does this court have jurisdiction territorially over Lagos and matters that happen near Uli, near Ihiala, in Anambra State? No. Does this court have jurisdiction over matters if, they were, if there was an offense committed, for example, say in UK? Does this court have jurisdiction over matters that happen in UK? Answer, no. Because this court cannot exercise jurisdiction on matters within a sovereign land, another country that has sovereignty under international law. Another major point is that you are trying this man, saying for committing, uh, for, uh, for belonging to a proscribed organization. And I must now say this, contrary to what the prosecution said last time, now the Kano has never denied being uh, a member of IPOP. He says, I am not a member of proscribed IPOP. I want all of you to know the difference. And when IPOP was proscribed through the court process, Inam the Kanu challenged it. The matter is at the court of appeal currently. Nobody knows the judgment of the court of appeal. If the court of appeal finally says that this prescription was wrong, as we are contending, let's say by that time you had already tried Namdi and jailed him, how will you bring him back? So you are trying him under a law that is inchoate, that is being challenged, whose efficacy and longevity is being tested and has not been finished. So we call it uh, little pendens or the doctrine of subjudice. So you cannot. So Nnamdi Kanu, in his extrajudicial statement, said I, he founded IPO in 2012 in London. And that is, is the head. He has never denied being the founder, head, and member of IPO, but he denies being a member of proscribed IPO. This point must be made clear. We have also challenged the, the entire um, law itself, the Terrorism Prevention Act as amended, of 2011 as amended in 2013. Now, it is not a law within the exclusive leg uh, uh, legislative list of the National Assembly that it ought to have made. It has no competence to make it under the Constitution. We have also challenged that. Um, there are other grounds very strong grounds where we are challenging that. The, for example, you, you, you brought this man, you abducted him by force, you tortured him, you captured him like a common criminal in Kenya. A British citizen who had gone to Kenya voluntarily, you captured him, you abducted him, and you, you rendered him to Nigeria by force without going through any extradition process. And all the laws governing this matter like Article 12, um, so, so 4, Article 34 of the African Charter of Human and People's Rights, like um, Sections 4 to 6 of the, um, uh, of the Terrorism and other acts within the Commonwealth jurisdiction, and even Part 5A of the guidelines issued pursuant to the African Charter of Human and People's Rights, say that before you can try a person for an offense, you have to show that the person was rendered freely and voluntarily, lawfully, to your country from the country where he was, maybe as a, a fugitive or as a visitor. But in now the canoe was captured in Kenya and brought here extra judicially to Nigeria to face trial. That cannot make any count based on that to stand. That was the last court judgment that um, they went. When